June 5th, 1942, Sevastopol. The Soviet defenders didn't hear a whistle. They felt the atmosphere rip apart. High in the stratosphere, a seven-ton projectile, the size of a luxury car, screams toward the earth at twice the speed of sound. In the trenches, men who survived months of hell suddenly realize there is nowhere to hide. This isn't artillery. This is a mountain falling from the sky. This is Schwerer Gustav, the largest, most terrifying weapon of Verfo ever fired in the history of man. By Krupp, for one purpose, total annihilation, Gustav was a building on wheels. Standing four stories tall and weighing 1,350 tons, it required a specialized double railway track and a small army of 4,500 men just to operate and protect it. Its 800 mm barrel was a masterpiece of steel and the ultimate symbol of Nazi obsession with size over strategy. The turning point came on June 6th. The target? White Cliff, an ammunition magazine buried 100 feet beneath solid rock. It was deemed untouchable. Gustav fired, one shot. The shell pierced nine layers of reinforced concrete and detonated in the heart of the magazine. A man-made earthquake leveled the coast, sinking ships in the harbor from the shockwave alone. The defenders weren't just defeated, they were erased. But here is the twist that history forgets. For all its power, Gustav was a failure. It fired only 48 times before its barrel literally melted from the friction. It was too big to move, too slow to aim, and too expensive to maintain. While it crushed stone, it could not crush the Soviet spirit. By 1945, the Germans blew up their own monster to keep it from Allied hands. Sevastopol eventually fell, but the sacrifice of its heroes turned the tide of the war. Gustav proves that in the end, no amount of steel can outweigh the human heart.